welcome to Let's Talk World. I'm Maria, your beautiful host. That uh, This Let's Talk World is the longest running TV show here at Social Media Shows. And it airs Monday to Friday at 6 p.m. And I interviewed a lot of people, business, business people, politicians, artists, makeup artists, comedians, and everything. The only one that I never had in many, many years is somebody who works for us, who protected us, who gave us the independence to be able to do whatever we do in life. So I would like you to help me welcome my guest today, Steve Sanson. Welcome to my show, Steve. Thank you, Maria. Thank you for having me. How are you doing today? Oh, I'm doing very good. Are you sure? Positive. You're not nervous? Oh, not at all. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyways, uh, we're going to um, dive into uh, my first question right, sure. right away. Sure. Who is Steve Sanson? Um, 6'2", 220 pounds, brown hair, green eyes. And like, some good like looking. Like long walks on the beach. Oh. Sometimes I like a little picnic. P picnic? Yeah. <laughs> pick and nick. But I, I thought I heard pick and nick. <laughs> picnic. 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 Oh, picnic. Picnic. So what is your ideal picnic type? You know, I was just messing with you, right? <laughs> <laughs> I am... You know, I am actually riding along. So no, let, let, let me tell you, I, 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 I'm a, I was born in Jamaica. You are. Yeah, raised in New York City. Um, I joined the Marine Corps when I was 17 years old. Um, I spent six years in the Marine Corps. I'm a combat vet from the, um, uh, the first Gulf War. Um, I did six years in the Army. Um, uh, so I did 12 years total service. I came out of the military and uh, moved to um, Las Vegas from California. I was stationed at Camp Pendleton at the time. How long? Uh, uh, how many tours did you did in the Marines? Well, I've been to the Far East. I've been to the Middle East. I've been to Europe. I've been to Central America, mm -hmm. and uh, I think that about covered. And then there's North America as well. You know, Canada, mm -hmm. Mexico, United States. So, so you've been, yeah, you've been around. Um, did you have you ever been to the Philippines? <laughs> Many times. Okay. Many times I've been. Were you on the air, uh, on the Clark Air Base? Or? I I have frequent there several times. Um, I've been to Angeles City. And I've been to Manila. I, I've taken have you those been to Manila? Oh, <laughs> you drove them or you? Drove no, them? I, no, I ride them. I didn't drive them. Oh. They drive crazy over there, like Jamaica. <laughs> Let me ask you this question. This is uh, out of tangent, technically. Um, what uh, what do you love? What is the best thing you like about Philippines? I know you love Filipinos. Do you? Yes, I do. Yeah. Lots of them. <laughs> <laughs> I like the food. Can I just be the one? I like the, the, the food. Absolutely. <laughs> I like the food. I, I like the ambiance. I like the atmosphere. I, I like the the quality of the people that are there. They're very friendly. Um, I, I just like it all, and, and and I like the finances there. I mean, you know, a lot of my friends told me that I should move to the Philippines. Why? Nation because um, I, I'm I'm a hundred percent disabled vet, and they said that I could live like a king in the Philippines. <laughs> What is the longest time you live in the Philippines? Couple months. Couple months. Yeah. You haven't seen it then. No. Would, would you tour me around? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> when? <laughs> so it's please. <laughs> I'm on it. You know, my uh, a very good friend of mine, uh, Ron Quince, who's running for yes. Congressional District 1, mm -hmm. he wanted to take me over there and, and so we'd go hang out. Well, it's, it's more fun if you are with a woman than a man. I, you know, I agree with you 125%. Okay, yeah, yes. okay. But uh, the only thing with me is you're going to have to bring my entourage. Oh, my God. How many are you talking? It's like four. Ooh. <laughs> is, that, is, that, is that Filipino money or U.S. money? <laughs> <laughs> I haven't been to the Philippines for a while. Right. Anyways, you know what? Here is so charming that you cannot 
stay you. away for when he looks at you you're just like drawn into his mm -hmm. you know it's so oh steve i look into your soul oh oh my god <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so tell me, um, what led you to where you came from, to the path that you're in right now? I'm talking about the veterans in politics. Sure. Um, I've been in Nevada since 95, and uh, I bought a home in 1996. And, uh, you know, when you when you buy your house, it was a new, new development. So when you buy your house, you see all this vacant land yes. and you want to know what's here, what's there, what's there. Mm -hmm. So I look at the master plan and the master plan said it was going to be all residential homes. So after two years of purchasing my home, all of a sudden the county commission wanted to put a fire station mm -hmm. right at the end of my cul-de-sac. Now, I'm not against fire stations. I'm not against hospitals. I'm not against prisons. I'm not against none of those things. But who wants these things in their backyard, right? Yeah, right. Yeah. So I, I was asking, I, I, I went to my county commissioner, Erin Kenny, mm -hmm. and she flat out lied to me. Oh, God. So when she lied to me, I end up suing the, um, the Board of County Commissioners. I wasn't victorious, but I was just trying to make a point. And I did have um, different stipulations on the fire stations. You know, they couldn't put their sirens on until they were about a mile away and all that stuff. So... When that county commissioner lied to me, that's what got me into politics. And in 2003, years later, I decided to run for city council in mm -hmm. ward number six, which was um, a relatively new ward. Is that is that the um, Henderson or the Northwest, Las Vegas? Northwest, Northwest of okay. Las Vegas. And uh, while I was running for city council, um, I received a phone call from a gentleman named Donald Fondasopoulos who was the president of Veterans in Politics at the time, oh. and asked me to come on board. Veterans in Politics has been around since 1992, and it came out of the Gulf War. So I was their media spokesman for a year, and uh, Mr. Fundasopoulos got into some trouble with the media, asked me to run for president in 2005. So I ran for president, and I, I won, and uh, I developed different... What year is that again? 2005. 2005. And I developed different chapters uh, across the country. Wow, congratulations. Thank you. And I put a chapter in Canada, in I believe it's um, Toronto, in the mm -hmm. Ontario area. So I, I changed the name to Veterans in Politics International. And uh, from there, we, you know, we educate the public on candidates running for elected seats. Mm -hmm. uh, we champion legislations for veterans' rights and we expose public corruption. So those are the three avenues that we do in veterans and politics. And uh, I have uh, my our own talk show. We've been on the air since 2005. Yes. And, uh, you know, we're just building our base. And um, people hate us. People love us. You know, it, it, this, this, this is politics. It but, uh, but I've been in politics in the state since 1998. And ever since then, Every election year, people are trying to take me out. They try to isolate me. They try to discredit me because, you know, we're, we're very boisterous mm -hmm. and uh, we don't take any bull crap from mm -hmm. anybody. And, and we're, we're, we're right on what, in what we do and what we say. So a lot of people can't handle that. Of course not. Yeah. Um, I always say uh, we is mentally weak. Yes. Yeah. They are um... jealous. I, a lot of them are jealous. Yes, I there's a, yeah. I just actually commented on one of those uh, this I think yesterday. Yeah. So yeah, when uh, they need um, I said they need uh, to see their psychologist. No, just kidding. <laughs> I know a few. <laughs> That's what I said. I'm sorry. I am mean, not mean. Um, um, okay, so you actually build uh, uh, other chapters. Yes. Of, uh, what other state uh, do you have? Do you have? Do you have? Uh, we have one in Missouri. We have one in New York. Um, um, I believe there's one in Michigan. Uh, those are the ones that I can remember off the top of my head. But to be to be full disclosure, I'm I'm more drawn into the one here in the back, okay. mm -hmm. and and it has it, it, it's it's a full time job, believe me. You know, I mean, we, we just got out of a primary election. Yep. Um, and now we're moving into the general, general election. Yes. And we're looking at 
2026 when every single district court seat would be on the ballot. Mm -hmm. And um, we're also dabbled in the family court. Mm -hmm. And uh, I wrote a book on, um, it's a self-help book on how to maneuver through the, fa or navigate through the family court system. And it should be published um, before the summer is out. Wow. So it, it shows litigants, you know, what to do in family court because 65% of family court is pro se. They represent themselves without counsel. So it shows them how to navigate through the system. Can, so you can you navigate through the system without any uh, representation? Yes, in family court, you can represent yourself. Yeah. But more chances, what are your chances to win the case? Well, I've, I've seen some good litigants um, win their cases, and I've seen a lot of them lose their cases because a lot of these judges want you to be represented by counsel because, mm -hmm. you know, uh, family court is very corrupt. And um, um, attorneys, you know, give money to judges, you know, on yep. election time. And, uh, mm -hmm. oh, oh, yeah. And, and you know, the only way the attorneys could give money to judges if the attorneys get the money from the litigants. But if you're representing yourself, you can't get any money from the litigants. <laughs> you know, it's really funny. Okay. Let, before before I am gonna say what I'm gonna say, mm -hmm. can I ask you how have you validated that accusation? Oh or yeah. Is oh, it, no, it's not, how fact it is, yes. It, it's not it's not an accusation, it's actually factual. Mm -hmm. I have seen it for myself. Mm-hmm. So this is first-hand information. Got you. That, I, 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 know, I believe you and I trust you, you know. And, 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 and anybody could go online, go to the Secretary of State and pull each um, judge's yes. campaign expense report. Oh, and that's you'll right see there, the, yes. Uh, you'll see the attorney. It's a public listed. record. Exactly. And you see the law firms listed. And, and a lot of these judges don't even recuse themselves from different cases when when they have counsel um, appear before them. Well, the reason why I ask that is... Um, have you uh, watched the TV show Su Suits? Suits? Or Suits. Suits? Yes. Okay. Um, okay, listen. So after watching the whole season, I watched the whole season twice. Mm -hmm. I love it. Okay. But in my own opinion, after watching that, I said that every... I'm sorry about to say this. I shouldn't be biased on any side, but this is the truth. This is my own opinion that every judicial court are biased to actually have the money. Who has the money? And it is, okay, here's the deal. I know we have something to say, but, and also I felt like every single lawyer's are all scam for me because you know what they are friends together they can go behind and said you can drop the case so they win we don't know i don't know i i don't have fact, uh, facts uh, for that but i felt lose this case and the other two cases you have with me um let, let, let me true? know i've seen that happen yes that that is true See, that's it's, it's a corrupt system. It's a, yes, it's that's what I that's what I was talking to somebody it, and telling them this, but I it's don't. So, know. It's so corrupt that that they normalize it because nobody yes. says anything because they all belong yes. to a, a, an organization called the state bar. Yes, and, yes, and they they. That's why I, they're all they're all together. I'm, I'm not saying I, I'm not. I wouldn't say it all as in a hundred percent, but in the high nineties, they're they're very very. That's together they yes. don't like to go against each other for some reason yes no. oh god anyways they are not we're not talking about them we're talking about the veterans in politics so can you share me the history of uh you know of the leaders of or founders of veterans in politics mission well the the mission is to give a voice to the voiceless basically mm -hmm. If you don't have a voice mm -hmm. and you don't know how to get your own voice, we come in to help give you a voice. Hence, our talk show program mm -hmm. gives um, people a platform mm -hmm. so they could go ahead and, and extend their voice mm -hmm. and, and they could go ahead and get things done. So that's what we do. And our social media is huge. I mean, our, our email blast is about 60 something thousand. And our our social media is about forty something thousand, so we, we cover about a hundred thousand, and we, we've we've been around many many years. So, mm -hmm. I mean, we, we're we're going on. Well, me personally, been with the organization for twenty years this year. Mm -hmm. 
Congratulations. So, thank you. Yeah, that's a really good accomplishment. Yeah, and we, we do many things. We do billboards. Um, we, 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 we're at different events. Um, do you, uh, is there anybody in your organization that can represent people? As far as, as uh, you know, lawyers? Yeah, well, um, say, um, maybe like one on one representation, not, not representation, like advice. Like, let's say, I don't know what to do. This is what's happening right now. I have a problem family wise. Can I come to you, Steve? Many, many litigants have contacted me over the years and they have come to me and I've given them free counseling. And I, and I, and I tell them that I'm not an attorney, but I, I know a lot about yeah. the family court system. So yes, they, they do call me. 702-283-8088. So Say that again. 702-283-8088. They do call me. Or, or our VIP president at cs.com and our website is veteransandpolitics.org. And uh, we have um, a YouTube channel on their veterans and politics as well. And we have a whole slew of interviews and court videos that are located. That's there. awesome. That's very helpful because, you know, I, uh, I have some kind of uh, kind of situation. Um, I think more than a year ago, and I called probably ten different attorneys to help me out, and they're looking for seventy thousand dollars to start my case. Yes, there's a case, but then they want my seventy thousand dollars up front. What is it? Seventy thousand. Yes. Seventy. Seventy. Seven zero. Seven zero. Comma? Yes. Oh, wow. And then um, nobody want to take my case of where they said, everybody said it's a winnable case, mm -hmm. but then um, I need to give $70,000. You know what? If it's a winnable case, um, they then, should take it on contingency. Yes. <laughs> right? So I was talking about them. This one, one wanted, uh, one, one actually take the case. Mm -hmm. Now... I don't know if I can say this in on camera, but you know they they look on what if we're gonna go with the case, how much could we could we get it back? And they said zero, and we saw zero. So you get back zero, but the attorney makes the money. No, but, well, no. <laughs> technically, we we you you see, uh, we went and take a look what they have. Right. In case they lose the case, what can they sell? Right. Or oh, they want a collateral. We go out, yes, no. collateral. Uh, that's what I don't know what you call it, but no. and then we're like, oh, this is yeah. So they they gave me a choice. So I'm like, uh uh. You want your car note or your house title or something? Uh, no, no. What they can get from the other person if we sue them uh -huh. and we get and they lose the case. Right. What can we get from the party? Right. So, I understand. Yeah, so I was like, and so they came to me and this is their property. This is their asset. What do you want? I'm like, that's it. Right. And I'm like, no, it's a waste of my time. So I wanted to just, you know, just talk a little bit about um, what happened in this election cycle. Yes. 73% um, of our um, endorsed candidate, I mean, excuse me, we had 73% of our endorsed candidates made it to the, um, to the general yeah. election. Yes. And that doesn't even include the candidates that didn't have a primary. So we, we, we've done pretty good yeah. in, our, in our endorsement practices. Yeah. So uh, can you mention the names? Uh, that that moved forward? Yes. Um, we had Carl Catarata. Uh, we had... Um, Ron? Um, well, well, Ron Quince, um, he's already in the general election. He didn't have a primary because he's a nonpartisan now. Oh, gotcha. Yes. Yeah. And uh, we had um, uh, Adina Neal, Stephen Horsford, um, Drew Johnson. And you got to understand we're, we're nonpartisan. So we, we endorse Republicans, Democrats, independents. Um, Independent American Party and Libertarian. So we. So we what? Uh, what is the benefit? Uh, let's say I am. Uh, I'm a candidate, and mm -hmm. I wanna be endorsed by uh, veterans in politics. Mm -hmm. What? Um, what are the benefits? What are the advantages for me as a candidate? Well, you. Well, our bylaws say the only way we could endorse you, you have to actually participate in our endorsement process. If you don't and the process is? Yeah. If you don't participate then um then you cannot be endorsed. The process is live. It's on air. Mm -hmm. um, 
we do it on Facebook and we also take for other social media um, channels such as YouTube. And um, after we, we invite all the candidates that are running in that particular race, mm -hmm. um, whether let's say you're running for Congressional District 3, um, every candidate that's running in that Congressional District 3 race, regardless of your party affiliation, mm -hmm. we call you to, uh, to come and interview and we have all those candidates at one time and we have a panel that asks questions and we have a moderator know. and we have a moderator and um, then you know at the end of the day we vote on what candidate we want to endorse mm -hmm. in each race and if we don't want to endorse a candidate we'll do a no endorsement and don't mm -hmm. endorse anybody and then after we endorse that candidate we present an endorsement we present the plaque mm -hmm. to the candidate at their event and we also will help that candidate all along you know, we'll invite them to different things, different functions, you know, get their name out there. Uh, we'll help them with social media boosting. Uh, we'll help them with billboard advertisements. So we, we don't say you're endorsed and then we walk away from you. We actually stay there and help you win. Mm. Because the purpose of an endorsement is to make sure that you become the next. Do you guys make whatever. money out of this? No. What, what, how, where do you get your funds? Traditional TV is going away. Hollywood is starting to fade. People are demanding real stories from real people. Our voices are now being heard in our own way. Podcasts, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and TikTok Live are becoming the norm. Internet TV has now reached the highest demand in human history. Social Media Shows is now the new media of the century. Hi, I'm Deacon T with Modern Word Ministries. It's great to be with you today. Just a short little promo for our show. Every Sunday morning we have service and you can follow us at 10 a.m. Pacific Time on modernwordministries.org. And if you missed us or you want to see some of our older messages, go ahead and check us out on socialmediashows.com every single morning at 9 a.m. It's a great way to kick off your day, get a little bit of the word in you, get something uplifting, get you started off on your way. You know, if you're looking for prayer or you need some help, reach out to us. If you go to our website, again, that's modernwordministries.org, Org, you can interact with me via telephone, via DM, text message, whatever you want. I'll get right back to you. So if you need prayer, you need help, you just need somebody to talk to, Modern Word Ministries is here for you. We are your church in the community. So until you see you next time, be blessed, everybody. Bye-bye. We've reached the age of live streaming on social media shows. You may ask, we're already ahead of the curve, so why do you need to advertise with us? Well, only 8% of the businesses in the U.S. are using digital advertising to grow their business. That's 2 percentage points short of reaching critical mass, which will lead to faster results. We have 20 plus shows with a reach of over 80,000. We'll give you commercial ads, website link, and connections to nonprofit organizations. So get your brand ready for digital modernization, for we are looking for sponsors which will bring more traffic to your business and ultimately mean more sales. So let's bring the world to you. Inquire now. Do you guys make Whatever. money out of this? No. What, what, how, where do you get your funds? Sponsors. Okay. So sponsors, they fund us and that's how we get our money. Or many times I go in my own pocket and, um, and I pay for it because I believe in it. And if you believe in something, it doesn't matter what the cost is. Yes, you know? correct. Yeah, you know, it's just like if you was to um, if you was to have a child, you you'll just whatever that child needs or wants, you just put your money because you believe in that child, you love the child, and you you want the child to prosper. The same thing with veterans and politics. For me, to me, it's like it's like my child. Mm -hmm. I want it to prosper. I believe in it. So, and if I believe in it, that means I have to believe in the candidates we actually endorse. Mm -hmm. If I don't believe in the candidates we endorse then we shouldn't endorse them. Yeah, you shouldn't. <laughs> so do you have, do you um, uh, actually research and take necess uh, you know, due diligence with the candidate that you endorse? Oh, or? yeah, we do background on the candidates. Oh. 
Yeah, I, I, I have I have had private investigators do stuff on different candidates. I've had candidates followed. Um, I have pulled um, criminal and financial reports on different candidates. Mm -hmm. um, I have um, do a deep dive in uh, search engines on different candidates, mm -hmm. but I don't personally sit on the panel that endorses the candidates because yeah. they say that I I know too to many candidates. That, yeah. that that way puts me in, in a different light but um everything else other than endorsement of a candidate i do the only time i actually do an endorsement is when it's a tie and i'll make sure that there is i try to make sure that there is no tie i have an odd number of panel members there so there won't be a tie but sometimes you know some people call it sick and they can't make it and what have you and then all of a sudden, it's a tie between the two candidates, and then I have to break the tie. Usually, how do you break the tie? Usually, ninety nine point nine percent of the time, I will go with a no endorsement. Less <laughs> headache, huh? Less headache, less headache. But there is the point one percent that I, I will go and I'll go and endorse if if it's a um, and then. If it's a really, really important race, like mm -hmm. governor, yes, you know, or U.S. senator, we don't have Joe Bernard run, running this time. No, right? yeah. no, no, we don't. No, we have the um, the senatorial race, mm -hmm. who I was very much behind, uh, a young lady named Stephanie Phillips, mm -hmm. and um, running on the Republican ticket, and um, she ran circles around all eleven of her opponents. There was twelve of them in the primary, including herself. And she was driving all the way from Las Vegas to Carson City a couple times a week, maybe mm -hmm. early, early in the morning, um, three, two by herself. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I, I was just dissatisfied on the amount of votes that she got because she worked really, really hard and, and she came in sixth place. And the guys that are one through five, they didn't work even half as hard as she worked and they got the votes. She went to the rurals and nobody shows up at the rurals. She goes to the rurals. They say, you know, you're the only candidate that shows up in, in these rurals, right? Like Elko and Winnemucca and Ely and Goldfield and all those rural um, um, places in Nevada. But yet her five opponents got more votes in those rurals and they never even showed up. So it, it's just amazing to me how people vote. Do you, do you, <laughs> do you, um, what do you think about the people uh, or the system, the, the system, the voting system that is, you know, it's not, it's fake or what you call that, they're cheating or something. What do you think? What is your own opinion about that? Well, I believe that there's flaws in everything. You know, everything has flaws. There, there is no perfect system, just like a judicial system, but it's the best system. So. I believe our electoral process is the best system, but I also believe that there's flaws in that system that that um, that can be manipulated from one person to get more votes than another. And I also Do you think that happens on this one. I think it happens in all of them. And I also believe that that, you know, each political party has representation like you have your um, your county chairperson and and your, your state chairperson and your national committee chairperson, all those people in the primary, if there are more than one, let's let's say Republicans, if there are more than one um, person running, Republican running for a seat in a primary election, those people that have that position of power in the political party, like the Republican party, um, they, should, they should not publicly endorse a candidate. They should stay away. They should be fair and impartial because if you start taking your favorite candidate and supporting them publicly, then all you're doing is ostracizing people from the party. Yep. You're not bringing them closer. You're, mm -hmm. you're, 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 you're pushing them away. And, and those, those position of authority, those party bosses, what we want to call them, they should be raising money for the party and they should be bringing people into the party right not pushing people away because they're trying to push their own agenda mm. which which I, I think is unsatisfactory and we have a we have a um, um in the republican because i'm a registered republican okay although i run a nonpartisan group 
Mm -hmm. We're registered to the public. But we have veterans and politics um, people in all the political parties here in the state of Nevada. But we, we have our National Committee Chairwoman, Sadal Chatka, mm -hmm. okay, who was publicly supporting candidates and then turn around and lie to you when you ask, hey, why you support? Oh, I'm not supporting any candidate. And when you know, doggone. So now they're, they're insulting your intelligence like you're just stupid. You can't see nor hear, you know, and, and it, it, it really pisses me off. I mean, people like that should not be in a party. How do you, how do you reprimand those? Well, you know what? Um, well, you reprimand them by voting them out. <laughs> That's the only way you can reprimand them. That's how you reprimand them. You vote them out. Um, you, you turn your back on them. You know, you, you don't you don't give them any support. And 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 unfortunately, that's how they do it. And that's how you have to respond. But it, it, it just it, it it just doesn't make people feel warm and fuzzy. I think, yeah, coming that, into a party when you have that. I type think that of is unfair. You know, it is it's unfair. very unfair. Yes. It is unfair. And I, you know, it's not only on veterans in politics, but in organizations, in relationship, those everything is for a reason why but anyways I, I i was gonna ask you are you the mo you know this one do you uh you know do you belong and you just answer that question now my my follow-up question to that is what is your own thoughts about these two uh, parties that is banging head together what's your what is your take on that? you know i i have never publicly went after a United States president ever in my entire life. <clears throat> and I'm only 26 years old. Wink, wink. But I have never... It's 25 and a half. I have never publicly publicly went after a United States president. Because when when you're in the military and you're wearing that uniform, you, you don't have a choice right. who your president is. So yes. you don't... You don't talk ill of the president, right? Correct. Because you disrespect in the office and therefore yes. you disrespect in the yes. military, right? And you disrespect what you're wearing. That's right. yeah. And you disrespect in your country. Yes. So you don't talk ill of the president. Yes. But now, now that you're out, um, I still um, then talk ill of my president because that's your president, regardless if I voted for that person mm -hmm. or not. But but this president is 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 sad. And 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 in my opinion, I, I'm sure there's a lot of people agree with me, and I'm sure a lot of people don't agree with me. But but when you have a, a president that that doesn't know left from right and falling downstairs and stumbling over words and and misrepresenting himself in different ways, talking about we're talking about a subject of Ukraine, but but he's talking about people of South Africa, and, and you, that's very confusing. I'm just using that as a as a as an example. Um, um, that person has to go. I, I, I think that there should be an age restriction. I think that um, there should be term limits for um, congressional seats and senatorial seats. I mean, if the president of the United States have term limits, senatorial and congressional should have term limits as well. I think there should be term limits for judges, too. Because Why they don't? No, there's no term limits for judges. I think there should be term limits for district attorney. There's no term limits for district attorneys here. Mm -hmm. um, see, all these things, it, the longer you stay in something that's that, that, that you're more comfortable, you know how to play the game more better, you, you know how to make more promises and deals, and you're, you become corrupt. You know? I'm not saying that the, those different seats I mentioned, those people are corrupt. I'm just saying it gives more avenue for you to be corrupt because you're, you're comfortable. And a lot of people say, well, if you want to get rid of them, you, you just... the system. Yeah, yeah, really good. A lot of people yeah. say, if you want to get rid of them, you vote them out. But how could you vote out somebody, really, that knows where to get all the money? <laughs> that know where all the players... And, and you're a new person walking in. You have no name recognition. Yep. You have no financial background. Um, you, 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 you don't know what's going you on. You don't. You, you, you don't. You just... You're just blindly trying to do what you believe is best for the people you're trying to represent. Correct. You know, but um, yeah, there should be term limits on judges too, because yeah, the longer you stay know. there, the more comfortable you get, and 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 the more corrupt you become, and and then you get the sense of you become a narcissist, and you get this sense of entitlement. And you get this sense of empowerment mm -hmm. and, and that your shit don't stink because mm -hmm. you are the almighty judge, you know? And, and, and to me, that's just, that's a disgusting way to think because everybody that's elected are, are supposed to be considered a public servant. 
and a lot of people don't know what that word is and they're walking around with a title. Yeah, they are actually, we're paying them. We people are paying them to be there. And, 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 and with all due respect, a lot of voters are stupid. They're just dumb voters and shouldn't vote. Although they should vote, but if you're going to vote, educate yourself on the candidates. Don't say, oh my God, I know that name. Oh, I'm going to vote for that person. Oh, that sounds like my grandma. Oh my I'm a vote. Th that is not a way to vote. Without any freaking research about that person. And, what and, does he represent? Who is this person? Right. How many, how, who, how many people he killed? No. Um, <laughs> how many, how much money did he embezzle? <laughs> you see? Well. <laughs> who are you talking about? <laughs> I'm just. So what do you think about the judge? Or I think she's a judge that has been. Um, he's talk. She's talking about uh, this black um, judge, where she was saying that, "Hey, when you're black, you run away from the police." Do you remember that news? Yeah, but you know what? Um, what do you think about that? What is your opinion? Um. Well. Do you run to uh, run away from the police? I don't run away from the police now because I am more mature and I know the law pretty good. So education. I, education is like the Black Panther Party when they found out about the Second Amendment, right? Yes. They were empowered, right? Mm -hmm. Knowledge is power. I mean, I myself was in a situation, got pulled over. I'm a CCW carrier, mm. a seal carrier. Yeah. And um, the cop pulled me out of the car, cuffed me, searched my vehicle without probable cause, mm -hmm. without a warrant, mm -hmm. and and I sued. And a lot of people were mad at me. What are you suing the police for? Because if you don't, they're going to keep doing this. They're going to keep violating your constitutional rights. Mm -hmm. So I sued, and they settled with me for twenty thousand dollars. They said that was one of the fastest settlement Metro ever had in the history. I filed in in December, and they paid me out. I believe it was February, March. You know, twenty grand because they searched my because vehicle. Because you know that they're wrong. Then they were wrong, and I had cameras. I had all the body cameras. Do you, know the, do you have knowledge about uh, about what you had to do at that time? Right, yeah. I, I did. Okay. I did know what to do, and and that's why I was tell on on the body cameras. I was telling the police officer, I'm like, you don't have probable cause. You don't have a search warrant, and I'm not giving you authorization to search my vehicle. No, you cannot yeah. search my vehicle. This is a traffic they stop. Still, the, Give me a ticket. Send me on my way. You they know? still search it. Still search it. Took the serial numbers off of my weapons. Told me, and I had a CCW and everything. And they're like, "Well, you do you know? Do you know? Um, um, it could be stolen." I said, "You don't have a problem cause for it to be stolen." You know, they, they were feeding me a bunch of crap. And, and if you don't know, if you're the layman and you have no concept of the law, you're probably going to believe it. But when you do know the law, mm -hmm. you're not going to let somebody pull some crap on you. And that's yep. what they were trying to do. And, and if you if you let them pull crap on you and you know better, shame on you, because you probably won't be the first person they pull crap on and you won't be the last. But it's your job to stop it. <laughs> So that's what I did with this particular cop. I stopped it. He was reprimanded. And I'm sure he probably won't won't see um, any type of promotion for a while. And good for you. I was trying to get your badge. You know who you are. <laughs> <laughs> so what? Uh, so now, uh, you know, veterans in politics, you guys help people, uh, you know, uh, to educate them for those things. Are you thinking of in veterans in politics? I think it's also your responsibility, maybe not full responsibility to educate this type of i think this is really a good avenue for you guys to look at too because you know not everybody knows what's their rights i don't know my rights i have to go and search it online and sometimes i get miss you know i i don't understand what they're trying to do right do you think uh that could be something that you guys can also provide oh we do that right now oh you do okay oh, yeah we we empower people to um educate themselves and we educate them and we we walk through and we tell them you know this is the best course of action and um you probably want to consult with an attorney as well to make sure that what we're saying is is, is right on because we're not Yes. And and it's it's the same thing with, with these different um organizations out there that endorse candidates. Mm -hmm. Um we're the only organization that publicly endorses a candidate that put 
or videos live on Facebook while we're interviewing these candidates, mm -hmm. a lot of these organizations, they, um, they do it privately. They do it in a room. They do it one on one. You don't know what's going on. You don't know who's giving money to who because a lot of it is all about money. You don't know who's giving money to who, what's coming I back. I think I'm in the wrong business. Who's promising who what position because a lot of it is promises too. Mm -hmm. And and they do a backroom deal and then all of a sudden they endorse candidates. For example, labor unions out there. Mm -hmm. The labor unions out there endorse candidates. But what they fail to tell you that they only endorse the incumbents. They don't endorse the challengers. So they invite everybody, make it look all good, like they're doing fair, okay. right? But they're not doing it fair because they only endorse the incumbents. And they'll tell you, when you go, hey, why didn't I get endorsed? Oh, we only endorse incumbents. Oh, then why didn't you tell me the challenger? To, why did you invite me to this kangaroo endorsement process mm -hmm. if you had absolutely zero intention of endorsing me because I'm the challenger? Because of the money. Yeah. The challenger. Sometimes the challenger is broke. <laughs> a lot of the times, it's usually incumbent the one that has the money and the power. Oh, of course, yeah. You know, and, and look what's going on um, with, with with these um, different endorsements. If you don't have money, you can't get them. And you're right about that. You know, look look what Jeffrey Gunter, who ran for U.S. Senate, was saying that Donald Trump received money from Sam Brown to get the endorsement of Donald Trump. Did you hear about that? No. That, was, that was all in the news. I haven't heard. I call him Crybaby Gunther because he did the same thing when he was ambassador of Iceland. He gave money to the Trump campaign so he could become the ambassador of Iceland. So I, 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 it's just a lot of these politicians out there are hypocrites. And then when people like me expose them, all of a sudden I'm crazy. And then they try to isolate you and discredit you, you know, and make you look like you, you belong in La La Land. That's what they do to shut you up, okay. you know? But me, I just keep running my mouth. <laughs> no, that's good. just be you. Just do I'm what just you have. Um, what do you think about the trial of Trump? Well, I've seen murderers get off. <laughs> <laughs> so what does that tell you? It, it was it was politically motivated, you know. Who cares if he gave money to shut somebody up from ha from from him having sex with? Who gives a rat's ass? You know, come on, is that important? <laughs> that's that is, that's important. And he had a, a couple of boxes of 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 um 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 classified material while you have Hillary Clinton had the whole thing on her server really yeah it, it's, it's it, the the the, the, the thing against Donald Trump was politically politically motivated mm -hmm. but you know what a lot of black and brown and yellow understand because they are wrongfully accused a lot of times if you do the statistics between black brown and yellow compared to Caucasian the black brown and yellow are the ones that get the 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 gavel tossed at them while the Caucasians the one that walk away like nothing happened yeah you know although now in this case President Trump is Caucasian but they're just scared of him they're scared of the man because the man wants to do right and a lot of black brown and yellow could you know understand what President Trump is going through because they themselves had the same thing. The justice system just throw the book at them because they're black, brown, and yellow. Not because of the crime, because they're black, brown, and yellow. But the, th the difference is with Donald Trump, they, go, they threw the book at him because they discriminated against him. Let me use that word. They discriminated against Donald Trump because he is exposing people and he's not a puppet. He's not going to walk your walk. You know, he's going to walk his own path. And he's uncontrollable. And the thing with these politicians, they want to control them. Just like Sam Brown with Mitch McConnell. Once, that's why Mitch McConnell endorsed him. Because he wants to use Sam Brown as a puppet and control him. And that's what they do. It's a whole political bullcrap. You know, and people don't understand it. Look, I've been doing this since 1998. I understand it completely. You know, and a lot of people don't. And the people that just get into politics... They have no clue, mm -hmm. but yet they believe everything they hear. They do absolutely zero research. Media. So what do you think about, um, it seems like to me, to me, okay, 
it seems like uh, we're gonna have a president in prison. <laughs> you know what? I want to see it. <laughs> I truly want to see it. I truly want. I. I, I what think, I meant is, we're gonna have a. Uh, we ha we, we gonna, I know he's uh, he's gonna win. Did you see that? He's gonna win. Look, look yes. at it. Look at it. There, there, there's a lot of people that were incarcerated, like for rape and murder, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden they found out the DNA it wasn't them. You know. Yeah. There, I'm not saying everybody in yes, prison is of course innocent, not. Yes. but there's a lot of people that are there mm -hmm. that shouldn't be there. I mean, the United States have a high incarceration rate That's on a global true. scale, the highest incarceration rate in, in on a global scale. That and I remember innocent. I remember when um, when um, Pence was running for vice president with mm -hmm. Donald Trump. Mm -hmm. and, and I went to the Henderson, he was there on a rally, and I asked him, I said, look here, there's about 145,000 veterans that are incarcerated in state and federal prison. What is a Pence Trump, what is a Trump Pence administration gonna do instead of incarcerating our veterans, how come we don't treat them and, mm -hmm. and try to fix them? What I mean, we're the ones that screwed them up in the first place. Yep. Why don't we, instead of throwing them in prison and walk away from it, you know, because that's what they're doing. And I also, because I helped establish the Veterans Court here in the state of Nevada, mm -hmm. which has helped a lot of veterans. And a lot of people don't know that because I don't go around holding up a big banner. I did the Veterans Court, you know, yeah. but it's and, me. Yeah, it's me. <laughs> but, but, but I had help. Guar guaranteed. There was lots of help with that. But people don't recognize our organization for doing stuff like that because they're, they, they, they don't want organizations like us around because we're like a Donald Trump <laughs> you know we say what we we say what we need and we expose crap and they don't want that they they would rather you know it's like the three monkeys hear no evil see no evil speak no evil and that's exactly how they want the American people yeah yeah, yeah. well um I ha oh my god mm. I think I think we should have a veterans in politics TV show here at social media show. Let's do it. Because that way I can actually speak out. This is my show. I am just a host trying to see, uh, trying to read their mind and dig into it and steer the kind of path a little bit. But anyways, I'm going to go on my last questions. Sure. What's the future? What's the, pro what's the, what's the future plan of veterans in politics? Well, I could go all the way up to 2026. Um, there is about, in the state of Nevada, well, in Clark County, there are 58 district court seats. And every single one of those seats are up for grabs in 2026. And a lot of people don't know that. So we could change the whole makeup of the judicial system in one election. Ooh. So I encourage attorneys out there that if you have going to have 10 years by the time January of 2027, by the time you raise your right hand, 10 years of practicing law in the state of Nevada, I encourage attorneys out there to file for those seats because there are 58 seats. And I also was told that they were trying to add another three to six more seats on top of that. So there's 58 seats in Clark County alone. Every single seat in Nevada, district court seat in Nevada, I, I forget how many they have up north, but I, I can tell you that there's 58 here in Southern Nevada and they're all up for grabs. So if you're, a, if you're an attorney and you're gonna hit 10 year mark, by the time you raise your hand in January, 2027, you should run for those seats. Run, please, run um, yes. And, 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 if, and, if, and if I'm trying to, I'm, I'm probably gonna open up a consulting firm come um, the end of this year I'll take on candidates and, 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 you know, my personality is you're going to have to win. <laughs> well, you, you and, and that's better, what I do. You better involve me. In. <laughs> uh, well, um, go ahead and tell them where they can find you, where they can actually uh, ask questions uh, when they are in trouble or what they, they want some clarity. Sure. Go ahead sure. and tell them. Uh, we have a website. It's called veteransinpolitics.org. You can go to our website. 
We have uh, two YouTube channels, one under my name, Steve Sanson, and one under Veterans and Politics. It has a slew of um, uh, endorsement interviews, and it has a court uh, court courtroom action on there. If you want to see what goes on in the courtroom, go on my um, YouTube channel and check it out. And uh, my email is vipipresident at cs.com. My phone number is 702-283-8088. And more than willing to answer questions and um, more than willing to talk to you if you want to run for a political seat. And uh, I, I, I have a wealth of information. And I, I, I might not tell you what you want to hear, but I'll tell you exactly what goes on. And sometimes what goes on, you'd be like, Oh my God, that really happens. And yes, it really does happen. I never thought in my life that two airplanes, two commercial airplanes is going to collide into the World Trade Center and the World Trade Center is going to come tumbling down. If you asked me this back in 2000 or in the early late 90s, I would have told you that you're crazy, but the impossible does happen. And if the impossible does happen, it's up to you to change the course of the impossible or to make your dream that's impossible possible because it can happen. Yes. Change the course of what's going to happen. That's what you're trying to say, yes. right? I think it's uh, with all of us, I think it's very powerful if people comes together to change what's going to happen like before the 2020, right? Exactly. 2026. So, no, before the 2020, the pandemic. It oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You see what, what happened? Mm -hmm. Everything you see. Who would believe that? <laughs> that the, the entire world is shut down. down. Yeah. Who would believe the Vegas trip would be shut down? You're right. right. Yeah, you know, nobody would believe that. But it happened. Yeah, it happened. But like what I said, if everybody comes together mm -hmm. with the right common goal or the com with a common goal, we could stop all those things. Yeah. We I can. didn't get to we can't, and you know what? And and if our and if our Congress, Republican, Democrat, stop fighting each other, we get a lot of things accomplished. Yeah, a lot of things accomplished. That's other. Uh, that's another actually talk. You better come it's back. Show? Uh, yeah, it's absolutely. another show. Invite me. Yeah, oh, I'll come back. You'll all, you're always thank welcome. You. Thank you. Well, thank you so much, viewers. Thank you so much, Steve Sanson, so much, the president of Veterans in Politics, joined us today. That is amazing. <laughs> I really, really, I'm really, really happy. I thought I won't ever, ever get him back here. But thank you so much, viewers. Please don't forget to subscribe, like, comments. You know, we are in the monetizing our video, you know. So thank you so much for all your support. And we'll see you guys again next week. Thank you. Done. Done.